All right, we've been working with variables for a while. What if I wanted to represent a person? So maybe I need their first name, their last name, their age, uh, their address, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and this is fine if I have one person I'm representing, but what if I have like a thousand people I'm representing? Um, obviously we've seen that vectors can store lists of information, but I would have to make a separate vector for all the first names, all the last names, all the ages, all the addresses. And then if I wanted to like sort them into particular orders, every time I found what I wanted to sort with in one vector, I'd have to sort all the other ones so that the stuff moves along with it. So if I wanted to sort by last names, I could use the values in here to figure out the order, but then I'd also have to sort of rearrange this vector and this vector and this vector. And that's kind of annoying. So I would like a way to bundle this information information together. So I can have one vector that has in each element the bundled information. And so I can define my own data type and we call that in C++ a struct. So here's what it looks like. It always starts with the word struct and I'm going to make the type of my struct person. So literally what I'm doing is I am saying um, that I am making a new type akin to string or vector. Um, and I am calling my type person, and then I can specify the specific fields that the struct contains. So I can say every person has this little set of data, has a first name, a last name, an age, and an address. And then when I want to define an individual person or a vector of people, my type is literally person, and now I have a person called P1, um, a variable. I can also put this into a vector, no problem. Um, and now say I have a vector of a thousand people, um, and so that will work. It's complaining because I don't have the vector library up here. All right, so um, now once I make this thing, I probably want to um, set up what's called a constructor. And that means that these variables, strings, they'll have this as their default value, um, but ints will have like garbage in them. So perhaps I want to make um, a little set of helper functions inside the struct that give these things starting values. So they look like this. The constructor, which is what defines values for a struct, is always just the same word. And I will make two of them. I will make one that's called the default constructor. And this, I will just say some first. I will just give them some default, uh, default values. Um, age zero, and address, some address. Uh, so this will make sure that the person has values in them. Now down here, when I want to get to one of the values for this variable, I just use a dot operator to access one of the values. So if I want to see this person's first name, well, I can do that. And let's try this. So I see some first comes out because that's the person's first name. So if I don't specify otherwise, um, it'll have these values. Now, if I want to change it, I can do that. And then when I print it again, stick an end on this guy. Now it'll have the new value, so I can change it using the dot as well to change the name. But maybe I want to set it up so I can give it values. Um, so I can write an alternate constructor for this thing that takes in... Some values and then just uses those to assign the real variables. Oops. I want to point out something to you because this is a common student mistake. The values I put on the left here are the names of the fields that are actually part of the struct and the values that I put on the right are the parameters from right here. Um, so now when I make a person I can set it up right off the bat to have certain values. So let's give it my name. Oh, how old am I? I don't know, 42, I think. All right, Wooten is obviously where I live. Um, so now if I run this, it should automatically have my first name. And if I keep looking, I can see that it has all my fields. verify that. There we go. So I've got all these fields bundled together in this one variable. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I want to write a function, um, then I can just send it a person. 
and I can have the function do all the work. And this function will print out the value for any person. Um, notice I do not have to pass these four pieces of information separately. I pass it this single person, and then I can access the individual fields here. So when I call this thing, it will just access the information for that individual and print all that information out. Um, so I get to bundle these things together. Now they travel together. If I were to make a vector of these, down here, Now I literally have a vector that has 1,000 people. Each one of those persons has this set of fields assigned for themselves.